Hey there, Twins fans. We're back for another episode of Twins Spotlight tonight. My name is Seth Stoes of Twins Daily and TwinsDaily.com. Um, writer, editor, owner. And uh, by the way, I've been doing nothing but editing. We've had four to five new articles every day this week. So uh, be sure to check that out. we got more coming on Friday and throughout the weekend as well. Uh, with that, uh, we are here for Twin Spotlight. This is episode 39. We had 35 episodes last year. Uh, with a variety of Twins players, current, present, future, uh, and past. And we are on episode two of season two, or off-season two as it is, since I try not to bother these guys during their seasons, uh, episode four of season two. So with that, I'm going to introduce our, our guest, our star of the show tonight. And it's one of the newest Twins uh, pitching prospects, one of the best prospects in baseball, uh, right-hander Simeon Woods Richardson. Um, you know, of course from Texas, uh, drafted by the Mets, traded to the Blue Jays, and of course, Twins fans, we loved Jose Barrios, but uh, we got a couple of pretty good prospects from the from the Blue Jays for Jose. So, uh, of course, that happened, that trade happened while he was in Tokyo with Team USA, where he won a silver medal, and then came and joined the Wichita Wind Surge. And, and uh, you know, we've written a little bit about him at Twins Daily. You know, we've got some get to know him kind of articles and our prospect rankings and things like that. But um, more important, you don't want to hear me talk. I guarantee you don't want to hear me talk. You want to hear the star of our show, and that is Simeon Woods Richardson. Simeon, how are you doing tonight? How you doing, Seth? How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, let's let's just start by getting to know you a little bit. You grew up in Texas. You're right yeah. by Houston. I you am. were at the Astros game the other night. Uh, it was. Grow up a big Astros fan? Um, I did. Growing up in the Houston area. Um, I grew up in A-Leaf, Texas, which is a little suburb city in Houston, Texas. Went to school in Sugar Land. But, yeah, I went to the I went to the Astros game. It was fun to watch game six. It was fun to go and to see the atmosphere. I've been going since I was probably four, five, six years old, you know, going to the same stadium. So it was pretty cool just to go to the experience. I don't I – don't, matter who wins, who loses, it was good to go to the experience and just watch the game, you know. It was just good to have went with the girlfriend and her mom, and it was it was a nice little time. Very nice. Um, you mentioned going to games all along. Were you a – did you have favorite players? Did you uh, just enjoy the team? Uh, Were they pitchers I, or position players? Both. I had both. Um, Roger Clemens back then when he was with the Astros, you know, just watching him. Um, Carlos Lee. Hunter Pence, uh, all those guys that were on that old on that old team. I would just grow up watching watching Biggio, Bagwell, hearing all those guys roll through there, and it was just just the atmosphere, the aura of the stadium when you walk in. It was it's a pretty cool experience. Absolutely. So when did you really start? What are your, some of your earliest memories of, of playing baseball? Of, uh, started when I was three. Little league or what? I started when I was three. Okay. And I always I always played with kids older than me. Um, I always played with four, five, six year olds. I started travel ball when I was maybe six or seven, you know, getting into that, getting into that and coach pitch and all that and really found the love of it when I really started like twelve years old, thirteen years old, getting into it, getting into pitching and just finding a little nicks and knacks. I loved both sides of the ball. I was a position guy too. I was a third baseman. Um, I could hit a little bit. I really loved both sides of the ball, and I just loved playing baseball in general. I was I, week in to weekend, all year round was just baseball, 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 nothing else. Um, a little football in middle school, but nothing else. It's just strictly baseball. So, yeah, year round, just mom and dad pack up, let's go, and just hit tournament ball, and just going to Las Vegas, going to New York, going to here, going to there, just playing baseball man it was quite quite the ride <laughs> i'm sorry seth i don't know what's going on with the mics right now i wish i could hear you I, I can't hear you right now and as i do every single show i managed to forget to unmute but at there least we go. hopefully it doesn't happen again um, and I can cross out the question on whether or not you played other sports because uh, <laughs> you got that one. So your high school team, did you have a good high school team? Is there a lot of good players? We where you did. Coach? We did, actually. Um, I was going to go to Dulles High School, which was another high school in the area. 
And for some reason, I went to go watch this Mickey Mantle, like, summer league team where all the guys get together and they play against other schools. And I stayed and watched the school I went to, which is Kempner High School. And I saw the way they played. I saw the way I was like, they they showed emotion and, and the way the coaches carried it. And I was like, okay, I want to go here. You know, I want to, I want to go here. Something about it is telling me to go here. And sure enough, they had state championship runs, playoff runs, a bunch of D1 guys come out of that program was Coach Jones, Mark Jones, and Eric Folkert, still guys over there. Um, they did really good. After, unfortunately, after our graduation class, it started to decline a little bit. But for a good six years, we had a good little dynasty over there, which was nice. That's awesome. And you mentioned travel ball. Did you did yeah. you get on the national circuit, the perfect games, some of those area code game types of things? I did area codes. I did um, – I tried out for the USA team in high school. Didn't make it. Um, I – did a lot. I played for Team Marucci with Adam Dunn, so he was my travel ball coach. He was wow. like he was like my father figure, my mentor. Him and Chris Schultz, see those guys over there. Um, I've been with those guys probably since I was 2014, so I was 14, 15 in that area. So yeah, being around those guys. Um, but yeah, I did area codes. I didn't do perfect game, and I didn't do uh, Under Armour, but I did area codes and. Had a good little time. Absolutely. Uh, that is the voice of Simeon Woods Richardson for those that are uh, downloading this later on the Twins Daily Podcast, which you can get anywhere you get your podcasts. Um, and I do welcome questions. If you're on Twins Daily YouTube or Facebook, uh, please feel free to send a question or just say, as Brenda has here, hi, Mr. Woods. Well, hello. And, <laughs> and uh, hi, thanks for taking time to chat with us. No problem. No problem at all. Absolutely. Um, so you were drafted out of high school in the second round. Be, mm -hmm. Being it was in the second round, I'm guessing you had one impressive college offers. Uh, did you have a commitment yet at that point? Uh, I was committed to the University of Texas. I was going to go to Texas University. Just like Adam Dunn, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> and, um, you know, the, the other part of that was at what point did you start seeing scouts? Probably my sophomore year. My sophomore year, I I got a big growth spurt. I grew like six inches, and I had like 40 pounds on me. Um, yeah, I walked in the, my first day of sophomore year, and coaches had to double, double take twice because there's a different kid rolling in there. Um, but, yeah, I would say around sophomore year, I would have college, college scouts come looking at me. Um, and that process started to go. Oh, absolutely. And that's got to be pretty exciting. Draft night, what were you doing? Were you just with family or was that I was, I was actually, I was at Buffalo Wild Wings with friends and family. We were watching, <laughs> I knew I had a bunch of guys going in the draft, a bunch of my friends I grew up playing ball with. And I was like, okay, I was, ex I was expecting to go second, third day. So I wasn't, I honestly, truthfully wasn't supposed, I wasn't expecting to go in the second round. But I was just watching. I was at Buffalo Wild Wings, watching watching my friends get drafted. And I was like, okay, it's cool to know those guys and see where <laughs> they're going, and just just be caught up in the moment. And then, sure enough, my agent called and he was like, hey, the Mets want to pick you up, and, and I took it. And from Absolutely. then on, it's it's been a journey. Absolutely, that's awesome. So you drafted by the Mets. I know that uh, you know you played a year there. Uh, you got to play with Jared Kelenic, who I did. Um, made his debut this year, but then you were traded to uh, Toronto in the Marcus Stroman trade. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I got to ask, and obviously this is one that I'll only have to ask once, but what is it like to be traded? Uh, you know, what is that feeling of obviously you're wanted by multiple teams, which is good, but you're leaving teammates. It's like you said, the connections with the teammates you, you form with and build with and create a bond with, because you're with these guys every day, you know, and, it's all about the connections and the relationships you have in team chemistry. And just to leave those guys and go ship to ship. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's not frustrating, but it's, it's understanding, but okay, it's all going to be a blessing in disguise somehow, some way, you know what I mean? And it's, you always got to look at the positives and take from it. And like you said, yes, it's nice to be wanted by teams and 
but it's at the end of the day, I, it's all going to be a blessing in disguise. Every little thing you have to take for a positive. So that's what I'm doing. Absolutely. And again, that's Simeon Woods Richardson. I'm just going to get to questions because I want to encourage if anyone does have them. Brenda's got another question. She says, do you have any superstitions? Uh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, I do. I listen to the same playlist, same music on start day. Um, left pocket is out until umpires tell me to take it in, okay. but it's out. Um, That's a good one. Yeah, it's uh, it's somehow it's always out, and I just st stuck with it. Subway, McDonald's for breakfast. Okay. I get a McGriddle with cheese, two hash browns, and a sweet tea for a start day every day. Okay. Yeah. So I got to ask, what's on that playlist? Or do you not talk about that? It's a little, I'm an old school guy. I like old school R&B, 90s music. I like, so it depends. Like it starts off like Notorious B.I.G., Montel Jordan, trickles down to Candy Rain and trickles down again. And then it gets a little hyper because we're, we're in the stadium. So you get your upbeat music and then it, it's a nice little transfer into the day. So it helps a lot. I like that. I like that. Um, and then you did spend, uh, you know, with that time in the in the Blue Jays system, you played with a lot of talented players, a lot yeah, of guys who are already up. And part of that, um, you know, I want to say that core of good players there. Right. Um, you know, and I think you're joining an organization that also has a lot of talent. But how fun is it for you to watch some of those guys that you spent time on the field with or were playing behind you, well, uh, watching them at the big league level, succeeding? It's it's crazy to see because it's like you remember the other year you're catching bullpens with this guy and you're working on the littlest things possible. And you've seen the dog days he's put in. You've seen the dog days they've put in. And it's 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 beautiful to see them on the other side and watching them succeed and watching them grow and just letting letting their work just shine, you know, and it's it's that's the biggest beauty of watching my friends on the other side of it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about you now. You know, you're drafted. Um, just high level. What what pitches do you throw? Uh, fastball, four seam, two seam. I throw a circle change up, a curveball, and a slider. Okay. Um, what would you say is your is your maybe best pitch? Or if you need a strikeout, what are you what are you maybe going to? Probably. I feel comfortable throwing pretty much. I'm at this point now. I feel comfortable throwing any pitch right now with with conviction, and I'm just polishing that with my game. But change-ups, fastballs, we're coming at you. Sliders, curveballs, we're coming at you. It's just, it's just see if you can hit it. That's always been my mentality since I've always just began pitching is just, just have 100% confidence, throw it with conviction, see if you can hit it, and that's, that's baseball for me. All right, again, that's Simeon Woods Richardson, one of the newest members of the Twins organization. Earlier, you talked about playing travel ball at a young age, at an early age. Um, but now, I mean, this last year in Double A, you were 20. You just turned 21, I thought. Um, and you're four, five, six years younger than a lot of the guys. Right. But two parts. One, do you feel that's a good challenge for you? And number two, I mean, how much can you learn from guys that have been pro ball players for three five six years it's funny because those guys that played three five six years they and it's like i've been with guys that played 17 years so i've seen i've seen guys who've just starting and getting the curiosity and the the freshness of wanting just to explode and show and then i've seen the later side of things where it's just the mental side of things and okay how can i beat you mentally instead of just my ability now how can i beat you mentally so i've seen all these great players just just evolve with me and evolve around me and just teach me little things and just little tips and tricks about the game and just little little just knowledgeable things you just talk about and just do day to day and it's okay not to just talk about baseball 24 seven. Like, yeah, like we're at the field all day, but there is some time to create life around baseball. And, and people tend to forget about that sometimes. And 
it helps to just have a personal connection and talk to somebody and just actually talk to them and get to know them and just have a genuine conversation. Well, that's, that's huge. It's a big part of it because you can't be 24 seven, 365. Um, we got another question here and this is another one where we're going to bring you back to the scouting question. Colton Parsons asks or persons, I can't read on my laptop. Um, hey, Simeon, how were you able to get noticed by scouts? Did your name just get out there, or what were some things you had to do? Good luck in 2022. You're going to love pitching at Target Field. <laughs> um, to get noticed by scouts, I would do, like, the little local camps around the area where a couple of college coaches, even on D2, D3, whatever, I just go to those scouts, go to those college, not even go to colleges, go to those camps, perform, just you being there at those camps, they're seeing you. Even if you do your best, they'll write it down. Even you just attending, they're writing it down somehow, some way. So you just, just go into those camps and just repeating, If even if it's an hour away. That's what we're going to do, an hour away, hour 25 away. Get up and go because the more and more you expose yourself, even put videos out. I know in high school there was like a like a website where you could put videos where college coaches and you could create an account with college coaches and view your profile and see videos and stuff. And it's like there's different ways to do it and just put in that hard work. You know, you gotta you have to put in that hard work. You you can't be the best without doing what the best do, and that's putting in the work every single day. And yeah. Great question, Colton. Appreciate Great that. Great question. Good answer, Simeon, as well. Again, Simeon Woods Richardson. Um, last five minutes or so here with one of the Twins' top 50 prospects, and we haven't even talked about, um, you know, your time in the Olympics. How was that? Uh, first, how did you how did you uh, end up making the team? And secondly, what was that experience like? I ended up making the team by invitation, I believe. I was – I was back at home when I was with New Hampshire Fisher Cats, and we were it was just a random day. I was going through the motions, getting my stuff, like daily routine, and I get pulled aside in the office, and they're like, hey, uh, TMC, Team USA called us, and they're interested in you coming to help to the quota of the qualifiers, to pitch in the qualifiers to see if we can go to the Olympics in Tokyo. Um, and see if you're interested in it or not, just let me know. So I walked out the room, I gave it some thought, called my parents. And I was like, okay. I went back in the room and I was like, I'm, I'm gonna do it. So I go down to Port St. Lucie, Florida. I help them pitch against Puerto Rico in the qualifiers. Um, end up going four innings with the win. Um, helped to get to the qualifiers. We get to Tokyo. Tokyo was a great experience meeting those guys who played in 17 years in the big leagues. You have Edwin Jackson, David Robinson, Homer Bailey in the qualifiers. You had John Jay in the qualifiers. You had a bunch of a bunch of guys that were just at your disposal of knowledge. And so I took that time just to be a sponge. I was the youngest kid there. Take that time, be a sponge. Just ask questions, pick their brains, you know, just, just ask questions, be on the field with them, see how they operate, see how they move, see how they get ready for their day and just kind of take from them and learn from them. Absolutely. I was going to ask you more about, uh, you know, a guy like Edwin Jackson, who has so much big league experience, so many oh, teams. My goodness. Yeah. Um, and everything I've ever heard about him is he's just a really good guy. I can imagine. Yeah, he's, he's, a great guy. Good cats. he's a great guy. All right. Um, last few minutes here, and we do have another question, and it kind of leads to, you know, obvious, obvious next question. Whoever says, hi, Simeon, hope you're doing well. Uh, sorry if this has already been asked. But does seeing yourself being traded for good established pitchers like Stroman and Barrios give you some pride? And I do want to kind of frame that around, you know, this year. You were in Tokyo, and you get traded. You find out the news, I believe, in the middle of the night. Uh, yeah, I like mean, Joe morning, Ryan yeah. did too. So, um, you know, what what is what was that like for you this time? Um, that experience being in Tokyo and getting that call at two or three in the morning, half asleep. <laughs> um, yeah, it woke me up a little bit. Um, I couldn't sleep for a little while. 
had to call the parents, let them know, had to call the trainers, call, call everybody that's close to me and in that circle that could knows all the information that needs to know so that when I get back, we can hit the ground rolling and get to work. But to answer your question, pride you. would not, I don't necessarily be the word, it would be pride, but it's honorable just to be noticed, to be carried at that value as that type of pitcher. Um, it's just honorable for me. It just lets me know all I do, all I try to do is translate through my game is be the best I can be. And if somebody can realize that, then that makes me, it makes me fulfilled because I know that I'm doing my job right. So as long as it makes me happy, it, yeah. Awesome. Again, thanks whoever for the question. Another good yeah, question. great question. Um, kind of a little, uh, I don't want to say rapid fire or lightning round, but I know you've okay. got, uh, you know, some time limit here. Um, you know, some word association or a couple of sentences about Austin Martin, who you were obviously traded with, but also you played with all year or right. in the Olympics. <laughs> right. He's he's a great dude. It's funny you said I was just on the phone with him earlier today, but he's he was actually my my on the road roommate. Um, we were back at the road. So he's he's hilarious. He's a great work, hard working dude. He very, very humble, very, very just get let's get to it i'm i'm ready to go to work 10 toes down we'll, we'll run through a wall for you um very extremely talented that can play multiple positions to so play infield can play outfield um nightly and perform and it's pretty impressive to see the things he does and to just be so humble about it and take every and take every day and want to get better and want to get polished and want want to have the want to it's that's that's big in a player great teammate as well and i know you weren't teammates uh once you hit the twins but joe ryan you got to spend right. time with him and in Tokyo, right. and probably leading up to that what can you tell us about him i know we saw him a little bit at the end of joe the year ryan's hilarious guy as well he was also my roommate when i was in the qualifier so just picking his brain getting to share a couple of laughs play video games just just kick it man and he's he's one of those guys that he gets on the mound he's a different dude He'll tell you, so he's a different dude. He's yeah. chewing that gum just locked in. I, I I know when he's locked in, he's locked in. And he's one of those guys that, he, like I said, he has that drive. He has that passion. He has that want, that that want to. And it's it takes that special want to do something and, and especially play this game. And if, if he continues to do what he does, he would be just okay. Uh, that's awesome. And kind of we've got a question from Silk, who I know is, uh, I guess, texting in or typing in from Europe. So let's get to that one right away because it's related. She asked, did you have any conversations with Joe Ryan after you both were traded to the same organization while both being in a different country? I sure did. As soon as I woke up, I went down to the cafeteria and I was the first person I saw. And that's the first time I was like, well, I said, well, let's get to work. We're teammates now. And he just started <laughs> chuckling and said, yeah, we are. All right, now let's get some food. And we just went to the yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. I want to ask you about one other guy, and it's it's maybe not a big name. Maybe not even everyone listening knows that name. But while you were playing in New Hampshire, you had a teammate named Brody Rodning. I did. He's from, he's from Minnesota, uh, from near the Twin Cities. I know he's playing in the Arizona Fall League right now. Um, what can you tell me about him? Hard throwing lefty from what I know. Hard throwing lefty, nasty slider, nasty cutter. Um great guy like i said he one of those guys that threw across his bodies that it was just so funky nobody could pick it up man and his delivery is one of a kind very unique um like you said hard throwing lefty you know just one of those guys who come after you don't care and will just shut down the door but yeah minnesota native me and him would i would i tell him i would I'm like hey i got a couple people i know up in long lake and he's like oh yeah he was like, okay, let's go to work then. He was like, he'll put you on some skates. I was like, no, nah, not yet. <laughs> not yet. We'll get you up here for Twins Fest when that happens yeah. again and get you out on the frozen lake and do some ice oh, fishing. I'm good. I'm good on quads, but I don't know on skates yet. I don't know on skates yet. <laughs> All right. Uh, last couple minutes here with Simeon Woods Richardson. Uh, appreciate his time. And, and actually, we're getting some great questions, uh, maybe even more than we normally get. So thank you to those those listening and hopefully maybe I can even use Simeon as a uh, 
recruiter to help me get some of these other guys on this show, right? No. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, so you know, aside from baseball, you talked a little bit about you can't be on, you know, baseball 100% of the time. What are some of the things you enjoy doing when you're back home in the off season, uh, just to get away from the game? I love, I love cooking, man. I love cooking. Yeah. I love drawing. I love driving around, seeing countryside hills. I love traveling. You know, I've baseball. Baseball is a very, I learned this, my mom told me this at a young age. She said, baseball is a big part of your life, but it's not you. And I was like, okay, that, that clicked for me because once my first off season, I did nothing but baseball and nothing but baseball. And I just found myself like, okay, I stopped. Now what? Like it's baseball, like, you know? Yeah. So I just started finding little hobbies, started finding little tips and tricks, like little and things that made me happy and just started doing little things like start doing little things in life that make you happy. It's all about being positive, man. And it's where I'm at right now. Love it. I do want to ask, uh, you brought up your parents a couple of times, great advice you're getting, things like that. Obviously, uh, you know, they're part of it, but who are some of the other people along with your parents that have kind of helped you get to this point in your life? Shit. There's been a whole couple people that a whole group of people. You have Adam Dunn, Chris Schulte, Mike Sharaka, Chip Ambrose, uh, Coach Folkerts, Eric Folkerts, Mark Jones, uh, Aaron Robinson. You have a whole collective group of guys that just founded me. Victor Nava, ironically, just, yeah, just a bunch of guys that just molded me into this player that I am today and just being hard on me, yelling at me at such a young age, just demanding perfection and just that's how I grew up that's how I played ball and so that's how that's how I'm playing right every day just competitive go get it don't show it out be on be passionate who cares once you're on that field you're on the field so yeah briefly what what was your experience in Wichita I mean I know you weren't there long and I know you um, spent a lot of time just kind of get your, your getting your arm, arm back after coming from uh, Japan um, just what was the experience? Did you have a chance to get to know some of the players over that final yeah. month or so? Yeah, I got a I got a great chance to get together with a good, bunch of the guys actually. Um, I loved Wichita, loved the atmosphere, loved the stadium. Um, pulled pulled together a couple good outings out there and got got back rolling again. And yeah, I, I loved every part of it. There was no down part to it. Um, fans were great. Um, yeah, everything was good. All right. Then I know I'm going to kick myself when we're done here because I'm sure there's a ton of other questions I'd love to ask you. But um, before you were traded to the Twins organization, did you did you know anyone? Um, Alaric. Oh, Sularic? Or Solaric? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is he from the area? Or did you Houston just area. Houston area. Houston area. He's from the Houston area. I played travel ball against him. Okay. But okay. besides that, not really. Okay. Well, and, and uh, you mentioned cooking and I know that, you know, I've had Royce Lewis on several times. He's a big fan of cooking as well. I got to ask you, what's your, uh, what's your go to me- go to meal when you're cooking for either yourself or your family? Man, it depends if you want Italian or if you want something on the grill. It depends, oh, yeah. man. We got options. Uh, yeah, we got options, man. So it depends. <laughs> Okay. Okay. That's fair. And last one, and I'll let you go, but you know, you look at Royce Lewis, Alex Kirloff, Trevor Larnick, um, you know, right now they're not the national names that some of the guys that you played with in Toronto have become, but it's a strong organization with a lot of young players and some right. veterans as well. You know, what are, what are your kind of goals for the off season as you prepare uh, to join that group? Maybe it's, you know, spring training next year and into next season. Just get ready, you know, at any moment, it could be time. So just training every day, like it's time for next year. So my plan is get bigger, get faster, get stronger, do everything you need to do, get more flexible, take your time, do your throwing, do everything you need to do because it's time. So that's where we're at. That's awesome. And I do want to say thank you. And I, like I said, I'm sure I'll come up with a bunch of questions that I 
forgot to ask you, but I don't want to waste your time. I want to respect your time. And again, just want to say thank you, Simeon. Well, uh, thank you, sir. No problem. Yeah, this is great. Thanks again. Um, thanks to everyone for listening. I definitely appreciate it. And uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully with a couple new episodes. Um, so be sure to check that out. It'll be available on the podcast shortly. With that, have a great night and uh, go twin.